thank you for coming over to our third edition of Isinga Camp Berlin. Yeah, if you use if you use Twitter or whatever social media, whatever is out there, so please use our hashtag Isinga Camp that we can find you and retweet your stuff if it's if it's good. Otherwise, we will perhaps not retweet it. Um, a short introduction. Perhaps if somebody doesn't know me, my name is is Bernd. I'm one of the co-founders of Isinga. Um, I work at a company named Netways, and you can find me on Twitter using GetHash um, if you want to for some valuable content or not. So, some uh, get some ideas from you. So, who is the first timer for Isinga Camp? Oh, that's a lot. Oh, that's really a lot. So, something I would like to figure out: um, who had the greatest um, travel distance to come here? So, who is from from far away? And Bavaria doesn't count. <laughs> Where are you from? Karlsruhe. Pardon? Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe. Okay. Still Germany? Somebody out of Germany? From France? From France? From Cyprus. Okay, that's that's number one I would say. <laughs> Switzerland? Okay. So I would say Cyprus is the farthest distance, right? I would say. Anybody else from America? Whatever? Okay. You won the first prize, farthest distance to travel here, and I think I'm up. <laughs> Means, of course, Michael, you're from Sweden. I don't know if uh, I was not. Because we're in the north of Germany. Yeah, okay, kind of. I'm, I'm not so good. But I would say Cyprus is yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and you get another mark somewhere else. Okay. Um, so before before we start, I just have a, a little bit of information, some some general stuff about Isinga, and then I will hopefully host you through the day. First of all, thank you to our sponsors helping us running the event, um, which is Netways, Asset Systems, and Thomas Cren, um, which have also a booth down there. And there will be a raffle. They have some stuff to give away, and the raffle will be after the last coffee break. So before Sebastian starts his talk, we will have a raffle over here. So if you throw your business card or whatever they have down there, they will have a raffle um, after the last coffee break. And we will do it over here because the last year we did it downstairs and it was not, yeah, I would say we could do better and we do it here because then they have the full audience and everybody can hear them. I would also like to thank you Linux Magazine and Admin Magazine helping us promoting the event. It's, it's important for us that we yeah, make some voice and, and let the people know that we're having this here. And of course, thanks to our speakers. Um, we have um, a couple of people from the Isinga team here today, and also um, some people not from Isinga team, which are Sebastian, Nikolai, and Michael. So, thank you for coming over and submitting your talk for Isinga Camp. Thank you very much for that. And I do it. <laughs> and I would also like to encourage everyone, please submit your your stuff. So it's always interesting. Sometimes in the coffee break, people tell us that they have about 30, 40 satellites in big environments, but we never know. Um, so always welcome. We are looking for, for talks. There are so many conferences out there. You can share your ideas, but especially Isinga Camp, wherever it is. So we're hosting a couple of them every year. Um, we are happy to have your stuff. So um, we would like to learn, I think also for, for others, it's super helpful to learn what, what pains you have, how you worked around some problems you have with Isinga. And it's, it's, it's always valuable for others to not hear the, our product story, but hear the, hear the user story. Um, so please really share your stuff. Um, go to Meetup, go to Isinga Camp. We definitely have one next year. We will have one next week in New York. So if you are able to travel there, there are still tickets left. You can come over. It will be on Times Square. Perhaps you can convince your boss to come over. Um, why not? Um, on Saturday, there's St. Patrick's Day next week, so this, I think we will go there and we will have a lot of fun St. Patrick's Day in New York, I hope for. Hopefully. It will be hard. <laughs> no holiday, it will be hard work. But of course you can come. And if somebody wants to come to New York, I give you a free ticket. So, I think it means you have to take care of the travel, but I give you a free ticket. Pardon? Plane ticket? No, the, the camp ticket, no plane ticket. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I don't know how much is it, like 300 air cargo, something like that. Should be doable. <laughs> okay, um, so here's the agenda for today. Um, perhaps it's not clear when it's, there's a break, but if you are the only one sitting here, there's a high chance that we have a break at that time. Um, 
So we have like always two talks and then we have a break, we have a longer lunch break. Um, and then we, we guide you through the day and hopefully end around 5 p.m. So introduction to the product. So somebody here is not using iSinger and w wants to figure out what it is and how it works. <laughs> Some, so, somebody, and this is absolutely okay, has, has no clue or wants to learn. I think it doesn't, doesn't know the foundation, co foundational concept, or is everybody like an advanced monitoring person? We are super excited, I, I feel it. Okay, so I assume the basics are clear. Um, even I think the talks are mostly assume that, that you have a fundamental idea how iSinger works, but I just would like to spend like two or three slides to explain a little bit how we see it at the moment. So the general approach we have is that we say we would like to monitor any application and any infrastructure with iSinger in, in some possible way. So what we have at the stack is the, the iSinger foundation is um, the iSinger 2 core as well, the plugins, iSinger web tool, some modules and integrations where we will see a lot. We have um, Thomas talking about um, director. Michael has a lot of integration in his, in his talk. So we see a lot of these integration and modules um, during the day. And this is our probably basic um, monitoring. Um, the three important things for us is that one thing is monitoring as code. So that means you don't have to do anything by hand. You use our configuration language or use iSinger direct and use means smart ideas to use apply, assign rules and stuff like that. Also using APIs. Another thing is that it's, yeah, of course secure and that it scales well. Um, we're always investing a lot of time in here. Also right now for the next release, there's a lot of happening in that area. And of course integration um, and the possibility to extend iSinger. So right now we have a, all these tools out there, we support them in some way, and there are a lot of other tools we support, or somebody in the community wrote some stuff to support them, um, and that was always our goal. So we not try to reinvent the wheel and, and do everything on our own and reinvent the 20th time series database. So our goal is more that whatever you use out there, I think fits in and you can work with all this stuff. So if you're talking about configuration management, we support like Chef and Puppet, all that, that, um, the tools out there. If you're talking about different time series or alerting tools. So that is our, I would say, strategical direction, that we support all them and you can interact with iSinger with these tools. Talking about the community, I always have this slide because it's super important. We know a couple of companies using iSinger, um, but most companies we don't know. So if you're using it and if you're allowed to share your story, it would be great if you can do so. So we have um, a small web form. It takes you about approximately, would say, two minutes to fill it out and perhaps say, is your company name? What are you doing with it? Perhaps a logo would be awesome um, because this is super helpful for us because, yeah, like I said, it's an open source product. I would say 95% of our users, we never see them. We only see the access to the package side. That's everything we know. And it's, it's super helpful also get your feedback, your your wishes, because it's a community-driven project. So we have so many people from iSinger, you can talk to us. We have a Ask Me Anything desk down there. So we'd like to know what you need. Make iSinger better, um, work in your direction. It's, it's super important. So two of that customers um, gave us some information is the telecom using a, a large iSinger setup with about half a million services. Ricardo was here the last three years, but I think he's not here this year. Um, so because he's from Berlin, he has not a big distance to come over. That's a, a really, really cool setup. And we're also still running on the ISS. Um, unfortunately, it's Isinga 1 running on the ISS, to be fair. Um, but it's still a cool story. Because they decided to use Isinga because at that time they thought about using Nagios, but Nagios didn't support Postgres. Um, even if they offered it on the website, they didn't have it implemented. Um, and we did, so they, they have chosen iSinger, it still runs. I, last year at PuppetConf, I talked to that guy who's, who's doing that stuff. So they don't have any servers on the ISS, so everything is running on notebooks, and iSinger is running on a virtual machine on a four gigabyte notebook. And he was totally um, happy that they get new notebooks shipped up there with, with some Falcon machine this year, where they have about 16 gigabyte in that notebook. Um, it's really, really high enterprise stuff they have. Um, 
And what they do with Isinga, they monitor all the environmental sensors in the ISS. So everything goes into Isinga, and every night they have kind of a replication shop replicating the Postgres data down to earth, and then they have everything and see their, their metrics there and see what's going on. I asked him to send me a screenshot, and he said, yeah, of course I do it tomorrow. It means I'm waiting for the day. Perhaps it will come. But definitely it's still a good story. I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to be um, to Isinga 2 or ISS falls down to earth earlier. Nobody knows. I think they extended it to 2026, the lifetime right now. So we will see um, if it will ever be there with Isinga 2. But anyway, we still like it that Isinga is moving around our planet. Um, meetups. Um, we have some Isinga camps, like I told you before, around the globe, but we start to support more local meetups. We have one, I have to get it right, I think in two weeks, um, near Zurich. It's a Friday, um, but also if you would like to do your meetup somewhere, we support you. So if you say, okay, I would like to have a meetup, we put your event on the website, we send you some swag boxes with shirts and mugs and everything you, you need to, to run that event. So especially if you're perhaps not from Germany or from Karlsruhe or <laughs> wherever you are from, um, so please do it. We would like to help you, so get in touch with us. There's a form you can you can let us know, but you can also get in touch with us via email. So whatever way you would like to connect us, we try to help you running a local meetup group um, to, yeah, to enlarge the community. Another thing is Isinga Exchange. Um, we put a lot of effort the last year to have a new Isinga Exchange. Um, whoever submitted something to Isinga Exchange? Oh, there's potential, I see. Um, it's really cool, so check it out, um, which, which is really powerful that you can sync your GitHub project um, with Isinga Exchange. So we don't have to upload your plugin manually all the time if you do some updates, so you can just log in there. Um, you can also use GitHub account, log in, um, probably link your plugin, add-on, theme, whatever repository, and then it's automatically pulled all the time, so we don't have to take care about it any anymore. So if you have something interesting on GitHub you would like to share with Isinga, and of course all the other people using our plugin things, like also Nagus user, Sensu, Subix, who is um, able to execute come Nagus style plugins, is, is very welcome to use the platform. Um, and as well give us feedback there. Um, we have some seeming going on right now. I think also Michael will cover that in the talk later on. But definitely give it a try. Yeah, just two words to the product itself. Um, one thing is I would like to mention we put a lot of effort in our packaging server. So a couple of years ago it was very distributed depending on the, um, yeah, your favorite Linux or Windows system you were using. So we would like to encourage you to use our package server. Um, it's probably at the end of a continuous integration and build pipeline. We'd also do testing, invested a lot of time, also improving the, the quality and release quality in the last years. Um, so it would be really cool if you still use some other server that you switch over to packagesisinga.com um, where we have all that stuff um, together for, I think, for every major distribution out there. And then I'm pretty, pretty quick, but that's okay because Samplarium has more time. Um, just to, to mention a couple of things what we have, and I think most of these things on the slide right now we will cover through the day. So in addition to our foundation, which I told you before, that is probably the core of our monitoring product, um, these are some elements which are important for um, having Isinga in your infrastructure. So we have a lot of stuff. Um, in the automation area, which is I think a director is a big part of it, and also the config management support and API, which is covered in some talks from Michael and from, from Thomas. We, we did a lot, especially last year, with um, Elastic and Greylock. So if you're using that and would like to probably submit events to Isinga coming out from, from, from Logstash or Elasticsearch, you can also integrate your Elasticsearch server in, in Isinga web. This is also something Michael will cover. They happen a lot. And also in the metrics area happen a lot. So we have released um, a graphite module for Isinga web 2. Um, and there's a lot of stuff happening, but I don't want to tell too much about it because Michael is having it in detail. Um, that's it for now, giving you a quick overview. So, any questions before we start? Anyone? 
Okay, then hopefully everything is clear. So another thing, because it comes up very often, the restrooms are over there, um, if you would like to go there. And, and, and also downstairs on the other side, um, you can find the restrooms, because even people have sometimes problems to find it. Okay, I think I'm kind of good in time. First of all, thank you for coming over again, and then I give hand over to Blarim. Have a great day. Thank you.